Nice. $269.19 per share is the price of Tesla stock as I record this. The market capitalization of the company now close to $850 billion. Still a long way to go from its all-time high of around $414 per share. And I would just like to say rest in peace to everybody who panic sold out of Tesla stock, especially those who thought they were smart enough to time the market and sold just before earnings to stock up 26% since. Tesla bull Dan Ives has some thoughts on why AI can drive Tesla past a $1 trillion market cap. On Tesla, which had blowout earnings, the stock surge had its best day in over 11 years. And if you look back to the year 2013, just quickly on screen now, Tesla stocks 21.9% gain in a single day. The second best on record you can see on screen now, the biggest 24.4 all the way back in May 2013. That being said, this top 10 list of biggest one day moves in Tesla stock, clearly indicative of the fact that the stock can rip an extraordinary amount in a single day. One of the many reasons why I recognize my brain's not big enough to try and time the market, so I don't even try. And it's not just that Tesla stock can rip higher in a single day. The overall long-term trend on this company and its valuation since IPO, multiple order of magnitude increases. I mean, look at this. 2011, in a single day, the stock ripped 17% to a whopping 185 closing price. Less than a decade later, stock rips almost 18% in a single day, closing just under $20 per share. But of course, this would never happen again, especially not on the back of autonomy. There was a day where it was up 24%, a month later up 47%, and a month later, three months later, another 141%. So does more gains beget more gains? Let's ask Dan Ives, Managing Director of Equity Research at Wedbush Securities. Good to see you, Dan Ives. Some of your thoughts on the stock moves, which have been monstrous this week, um, you know, can it continue to move higher? It's just starting because what I view is they needed to ultimately show that margin story that it was going to rebound. And we saw just massive margin rebound in terms of for Tesla. And it's all about deliveries into next year. 20 to 30 percent growth, much higher than anyone expected. Even the bulls like us, I think it's get the popcorn out. This is just the stage to this company being over a trillion dollar mark cap. I mean, you know, someone when I was asking about the competitive landscape said there is a monstrous difference between Tesla and Lucid and Rivian. Would you say that's right? I mean, not even in the same sentence? It, I mean, we're talking Mahomes compared to other quarterbacks, right? I mean, th this is just a separation from a scale and scope. They're going to have 2 million deliveries next year. I mean, a lot of these other, you're talking about 100, 200K. What Tesla's able to do right now, now it's expanding that product line. You'll see Semi, you'll see Roadster, of course, Cybertruck's out there. Sub $30,000 vehicle, we think, going into next year. That's ultimately going to be the key as this all ultimately plays out. And look, you go into this, me and you have talked about this the last few weeks. New York City cab driver was bearish in Tesla into this quarter. They showed the margins, they showed the delivery, and I do believe the robo-taxi takeaways was the wrong one that the bears came away with. This will be an autonomous and AI story over the coming years. You know, a Kathy Wood over at ARK Invest uh, sold 77,000 shares. Um, the closing price was 260.48, valued at over $20 million. Mistake taking some profits now? I mean, how quickly does this stock grow? Um, was that not a good move on her part? Look, Kathy and ARK, I mean, one of the biggest supporters of Tesla, right? So, I mean, they'll, for, for the long term, I mean, if you look at their model on robo-taxis and where this is all heading, it just speaks to our broader point. This is the most undervalued AI play in the market. On that point, I agree. And regarding Dan's comments on ARK's valuation for Tesla, they do have a five-year fair valuation for Tesla at $2,600 per share, roughly 10 times its current value. Now, they could be wrong, but what if they're not? And as for the selling, ARK Invest may correctly believe that their brains are big enough to time the market, sell out of this, lock in a profit, buy that. My brain certainly isn't, so I don't even try. But it's interesting that people always seem to read into the tea leaves when ARK's buying, or well, actually they never care when they're buying. They do care when they're selling. But ARK has an active trading strategy, extremely high risk by the way. But just because ARK has sold a small slice of a position of Tesla doesn't mean they're negative on the company. It just means, well, the stock's ripped 20 plus percent, 26 percent since earnings in a couple of days, lock in a profit, redeploy that capital elsewhere. Again, my brain's nowhere near big enough to be trying that. But just because ARK's selling or buying doesn't mean they've become more or less bullish on a company 
Instead, they're looking at arbitrage and honestly probably asking for trouble. And I think what we saw with this quarter was a huge step in the right direction because of margins. Because we could talk about AI autonomous all day long, comes down to margins. You couldn't see their team margins. So the 200 BIP improvement now going to 20% next year. But look, 20 or 30% delivery growth. If they even hit the bottom end of that range, then th- this is a stock with a three in front of it. Now, I do want to emphasize, it seems pretty clear. I don't know for sure, but it seems like the recent surge in Tesla stock is the result of a lot of big money institutions, algorithms piling into the stock, not at all to do with autonomy. After all, we saw the reaction to the Wii Robot event. Stock collapsed, actually. Instead, seems entirely focused around their automotive business, which in the fullness of time, just a few years from now, that entire business is going to look like a rounding error relative to what their autonomous business is doing in terms of revenue and importantly profits. In other words, as I record this, in late October 2024, it seems as though the vast majority of money in Tesla at this point in time thinks they are just a car company, that what's happening with their, quote, car business is all that matters and continue to completely ignore autonomy. Wow. Yeah, you know, um, I started to hear some good things about the batteries grows, the Cybertruck margins. Um, those seem to be good news. There was some impatience pertaining to full self-driving at the end of 2026 because is that hogwash? Does that get pushed back to 2027? Is that okay for you? It, to me, trying to look at six months, if, it, if it's first half 26, second half 26, I think it's split in hairs in terms of where this is all going. Because the autonomous and AI story, I believe the AI story is worth a trillion dollars alone to, to Tesla. So if it moves out six months, it doesn't necessarily move the needle for us. It, it- I completely agree with this point from Dan. I don't really care about the specific timing. What I care about is the overall picture. If you imagine an exponential curve, what I really care about is where does that curve get to? Where does it reach? What's the end destination in terms of revenue and profitability? I don't care. Because again, I, I model Tesla out over more than a decade. This is why my valuation model, which you guys can check out on Patreon with the link in the pinned comment at the investor level and above. From day one, when I first published it back in 2021, always spanned a 10-year time horizon. I'm not looking into next quarter, next week, next year, and thinking, oh, that's all I care about. Because to do that would be to miss an enormous, enormous increase in Tesla's revenue and profitability, predominantly on the back of autonomy. A short-term focus blinds you to the long-term potential. So if I'm looking out a decade plus into the future, and the reason, by the way, I don't share more than 10 years into the future is the level of uncertainty is just too great. I still model out beyond then, but I don't want to share that stuff because the level of uncertainty there, the rate of error is just too much. But I still think it's worth the exercise of actually modeling multiple decades into the future. So I couldn't give a flying fuck if autonomy happens three months later, three years later. What I care about is 10 years from now, 15 years from now, what does it look like? What's Tesla's slice of that? Did they have an unassailable data lead? Did they have the safest, most capable software? They have a strategy for massively deploying this, scaling almost instantly. Is it theoretically possible for anyone to catch them? Spoiler alert, no. This, again, explains why I'm still buying Tesla stock with every spare cent. I'd rather be doing that before they've unlocked a 10 plus trillion dollar opportunity than after. In the near term, it's really about coming out with a sub 30K vehicle. I think that's first half of next year. Margins rebounding, delivery growth rebound, especially in China. And then you start to look at all the growth levers that could happen here. That's why the, you know, if you look at the last 24 hours, the bears, they're going back into those hibernation moves. Did someone say Tesla bears? What's this? Who did this? And there's a picture on screen now. Tesla Q. Hmm. I definitely don't understand the meaning of this meme. Could somebody please explain in the comments what this means? Obviously Tesla Q would be Tesla short sellers. I, I don't quite understand. Uh, You know, Elon Musk has shown his political cards. And what do you tell the Democrats? Should they sort of put their political views aside and still believe in Tesla? Look, it's a tightrope. I mean, clearly, you know, it's been a controversial issue. But I think in terms of U.S., despite all the noise, it's been limited from a demand perspective in terms of the impact. Now, I'm not saying going forward, there can be some, you know, a little nervousness on that. But the reality is... If you produce the best vehicles in the world for EVs, consumers will buy them. What an incredibly uncontroversial thing to say. Make an incredible product, the best product in the marketplace, people will buy it. What was the world's best-selling vehicle last year? That's right, Tesla's Model Y. No matter how loud the vocal minority 
of extreme leftards suffering from an incurable case of sand in vagitis due to Elon Musk having opinions. The quality and the price of Tesla's products is what matters and all that matters. And I think we saw that yeah, with Cybertruck, so, right? Yeah. What is your price target on Tesla, Dan? 300 and then bull, and then bull case 350. 300, 350. Um, you know, in the cyber cab, I think, you know, the timeline was a little vague. There's no cheaper model. People were a little disappointed with that. But there's definitely this feeling that there was some good news. We saw the stock surge. And as I said, there were times where the stock, once it surged, continued to do so the next month and then the following three months. Nicole does make a valid closing point there. There are times throughout Tesla's history, extended periods where the stock essentially goes absolutely fucking lootly nowhere. But then... Out of seemingly nowhere, the stock rips, not just one day, but for day after day after day after day, week after week, month after month, soaring to stratospheric new levels after, quote, investors finally figure the fuck out Tesla's dominant position or their future profitability. The penny finally drops and like, oh, fuck. And then, like sheep, everybody just piles in one after the other. I just wanted to illustrate that very point. Tesla stock. From July 2010 at IPO until mid-2012, added about 42%. Not bad, right? Not bad, but fairly flat. Then suddenly, Model S comes out and starts winning every award ever. And from 256 per share, out of nowhere, Tesla stock up about 400% in a matter of months. I'm going to say that again. 400%. We've just seen Tesla stock rip 25%. Here, this was 400% in just a few months. People realizing, oh shit, the Model S is actually a great vehicle. They can actually produce it. In fact, it's the best vehicle ever. It's winning every award ever. Holy shit. They've actually made the best vehicle on earth. 12 months after that date, Tesla stock from the 8th of March 2013 to the 14th of March 2014 up 500% in a single year. But from that point, March 2014, stock went nowhere for more than five years. We can see on screen now, it's down 20% of this period of time. That's another flat period. Now there's a little bit of volatility along the way, but all the while the narrative here, first was the competition's coming and or Tesla's going bankrupt. And then, oh, no, no, but actually, the competition's actually coming now. And by the way, Tesla's still going bankrupt. And then the narrative became, oh, well, okay, well, I mean, the competition's actually coming now. And then it didn't, except all over itself, not for Tesla. Then suddenly, investors figure out Tesla's going to actually start making money selling electric vehicles. And what, what happens then? Tesla stock around 12 bucks a share. Less than a year later, it's up over 300, 400-ish percent. Crashes back down to reality slightly. And then what happens? From the end of March until mid-July... A blink of an eye, stock's up nearly 200%. Over roughly nine months, March 2020 to January 2021, the stock rips 750%. 14th of May 2021, until its peak price, roughly, give or take doubling in the span of just a few months. Yet if we look at things as they stand today, 28th of August 2020, Tesla stock, $147 per share. In January 2023, years later, stock was about 25% off. Fast forward a little bit more, 28th of August 2020, 19th of April 2024, the stock had moved approximately 0% now. A lot of volatility between now and then. But look at this. Close to a four-year period where the stock was worth approximately the same amount at the end of that time versus the beginning. And now suddenly out of nowhere, stock ripping 83% between April and October of this year. This is why I don't try and time the market. I look into the distant future, try to predict to the best of my ability a range of different scenarios. What's the probability? What does it look like? What's the value of the company in each of those scenarios? Then I look back to today, work back from that future point, 10 years into the future, and ask myself, given this, my prediction, my valuation model, right, for the company, again, link in description, join Patreon, investor level and above. Does it look like a good deal today? And if so, are there any other deals that are comparable in terms of being risk adjusted? Any other risk adjusted opportunities that are comparable? And the answer so far since 2016 has been, one, it looks like a good deal. Two, it looks like the best risk-adjusted opportunity that I'm aware of, and then I buy. That's literally what I've been doing since early 2016. Now, look, I don't know, but my best guess is that today, investors still aren't appreciating a fraction of the opportunity that autonomy will represent. And Tesla's dedicated cyber cap enters production, give or take a little over 12 months from now. They also believe that next year, so Model 3s slash Ys will begin operating as robo-taxis in Texas, California, and possibly some other states as well. Clearly, investors, based on Tesla's current market capitalization, have not yet either recognized this or they just simply don't believe it's going to happen. Want more content? Early access? 
bunch of perks, click the links in the pinned comment. AG1 is awesome. I've been taking it daily now for more than three years. It's a great way to fill in nutritional gaps. It's packed full of vitamins, minerals, and whole food source nutrients, plus has prebiotics, probiotics, and adaptogens to improve gut health, regularity, and help your body handle stress. I'm always looking for an edge to help me feel and perform my best, which is why I haven't missed a day of AG1 for more than three years. Just try it and see how you feel. Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs. This is what viewers of the channel had to say after trying AG1. I feel like I have a lot more energy since I started on AG1. Just got my AG1 in the mail, legit feeling the effects after day three. Three months ago, I started AG1 and have been enjoying the evenness of alertness and energy that lasts the day. I just started the wife on it too. Are you convinced yet? I mean, hey, it's worth trying, right? Click the link in the pin comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR or I can keep going. This viewer after about a month on AG1, definitely a lack of fatigue in the afternoon. Pleasant side effect is that my coffee intake has imploded and is almost down to zero. One more. Yeah, why not? I honestly feel younger and will be continuing to use AG1. This stuff really is crazy good. I didn't think it would be, but this stuff is awesome. It really is what everyone is saying. One more. Don't mind if I do. I've just received my third month supply. I've drank it every day. I have so much energy throughout most of the day. I'm productive, started a new business, started socializing, refurbished a boat. It's no coincidence. Thank you for your persistence, your integrity, and your insights. Now look, these are not my words. These are not my testimonials. This is what you guys and girls are saying. Maybe it's 100% placebo effect, but even if that's the case, I think it's money well spent. Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs.